We're here today to ask Pat Coleman some questions about Garmin's new GI-275 electronic flight instruments and what makes them unique. And Pat's also going to help us understand more about new features with the GTN navigators, specifically the new XI versions of the GTNs. The GI-275 electronic flight instruments are quite flexible and offer a lot of utility for airplanes from light piston singles on up to jets, where they can act as a standby instrument. Pat, can you tell us more about the GI-275 and where people might find them useful for their airplanes? The GI-275 is a very versatile instrument. It's capable of fulfilling multiple roles uh, depending on the application and the installation. Uh, some of the different types of uh, instruments that I can replace, you can have an attitude indicator, which can be both primary and a standby. You can have an HSI, uh, which you can use as primary. There's also a multifunction display option where you can see weather, traffic, terrain. Uh, there's a CDI option as well as EIS. And so with just one uh, piece of equipment, you can have all of those different capabilities. But what you see and with the pages that you can scroll to will depend on the installation. For example, a primary attitude indicator is not allowed to leave the primary attitude page, whereas a multifunction display uh, obviously can change between a bunch of different options like map, uh, terrain, weather, traffic, things like that. Uh, there's three main uh, hardware types of the GI-275. They're all the same size uh, and shape. These, there's a base option, which is uh, what we use for a CDI as well as the MFD. There's an ADAHARS type, uh, so air data and AHARS, which is what we use for the attitude indicator and the HSI. And then there's an ADAHARS plus AP variant, which is what we use to interface with uh, third-party or non-Garmin autopilots. Uh, for more information on exactly what features you get depending on the installation, the configuration, the pilot's guide that's on Garmin.com has a really good table that shows you exactly what you will and will not see depending on the configuration. Can you show us how the interface works with the GI-275s? I know they have touch screens as well as separate controls, but some people wonder if these instruments are too small to have touch screens. The GI-275 has multiple ways you can interact with it, both with the dedicated dual concentric knob as well as a touch screen. Now, depending on the application of the GI-275 instrument, you'll get more or less capability. So for example, on the MFD that we have on the top left here, you've got a lot of functionality since it's a multifunction display. You can use the small knob uh, to zoom in in this traffic uh, map, for example. Uh, you can also use the large knob to move between the different uh, multifunction options. And then as well, if you want to touch on a given airport or zoom in, you can do that via touchscreen um, as well. On the attitude indicator, it's a little bit different story since you can't leave that page. Uh, there really aren't pages to change to. In fact, if you try and move the pages, you get a little indication saying no other pages. But you can use both the touchscreen and the small knob to change bug settings. So your uh, altitude uh, pre-select or your heading, for example. And simply just touching the, uh, twisting the knob will change uh, the barrow setting in this case. You can also touch on a given field, like the heading bug, and move it that way. Over here on the EIS, um, you can think of the EIS function as really kind of a multifunction uh, capability. So this is your primary EIS page. It's what's going to be on there most of the time. But we record so many more things and have so many more parameters uh, that it doesn't all fit on one page. So you can actually use this big knob here to cycle between the different pages and see more uh, uh, specific information, so CHT uh, in this case. Down the bottom, we've got our dedicated HSI. Um, same thing, uh, you won't be able to leave the HSI page, although you can switch between a uh, basic HSI like you've got here and then our enhanced HSI uh, with a moving map. Um, the touchscreen, uh, while it is uh, relatively small, we're kind of bound by the size of a regular round instrument. Uh, the buttons are as big as they can be. They're also outlined in a really crisp white line so you know exactly what is touchable and what's not touchable. And when it comes to functionality, we've built it so that you can uh, touch the screen or use the dual knob for most functions. So if you do uh, end up getting bumped around as you reach up to touch it, you can always grab right for the knob and make the same change at the same time. Can you explain the differences between the GI-275 and the G5 electronic flight instruments? The GI-275 
versus G5 is a question we get asked a lot. Um, and there's, there's some really obvious uh, answers to it. For one, the GI275 has a round form factor, mounts from the rear, whereas the G5 is more square and front mounted. Um, but some of the less obvious uh, things are the amount of capability. The GI275 has a lot more ability to interface with both Garmin and third-party products, whereas the G5 is really optimized for just Garmin products. Uh, the GI275, as you can see here, has synthetic vision uh, as an option that's available, as well as a map overlay on the HSI, whereas the G5 just has that traditional blue over brown uh, presentation and just a, a black and white HSI. Uh, the GI275 also has the ability to be a multifunction display, as we've covered, so you've, you can use it for EIS. Uh, it's also got a building block approach so that you can uh, buy one now and add more into the future as your capabilities or your budget allow for. Um, and really, uh, both of them are great options, but they're really set up for kind of two different use cases uh, and two different um, installation types. The GI275, we know, can be used as an engine indicating system, but what kind of extra equipment or sensors are needed in that configuration? For an EIS installation, in addition to the GI275, you're gonna need one of Garmin's two different engine adapters, uh, depending on the size and the weight of the aircraft. Also, those are one per engine, so in a multi-engine installation, you'll need two. Uh, but the other nice things about the GI275 EIS is in addition to get your engine indication system, so you've got your RPM, manifold pressure, oil pressure, things like that, it also records a lot of all of this information and gives you things like uh, your electrical load. You can see individual CHT and EGTs. Um, and the best part of all, this information, uh, as I said, is all recorded. And you can actually offload it by plugging in a USB drive to the GSB-15 here. Uh, and just one quick note on the GSB-15, uh, Garmin just announced a new variant that has uh, USB Type-C connections for even faster charging. I know the GI-275s come in a few different configurations, but what kind of pricing are we looking at here? The GI-275 starts at $31.95. We also have some questions about the GTN XI navigators and wondered if you could tell us a little bit about the new features. Some of the new features of the GTN XI uh, include an upgraded screen, and so that's gonna be brighter and offer a wider viewing angle, as well as benefit from uh, the latest and greatest technology in processing. So as you pan and zoom on the map, uh, that's faster and crisper looking, um, as well as that wider viewing angle. Now, on the GTN 750 and 650 XI models, we've got a couple of new specific features that I'll cover here real quick. If you look on the 750 XI here, you can see this cyan circle uh, on the uh, map there, and that represents the glide range ring. So when the uh, GTN 750 XI is being installed and configured, we'll put in the glide, ra uh, glide ratio information. And then as you're flying along, uh, we're constantly taking uh, wind and terrain information into account to show an estimated glide uh, range from, from where you are at your current altitude. Um, so here in the Midwest, it's fairly flat, so it's pretty close to a circle, but in a mountainous area, that's very helpful to help you even just know which direction to turn initially left or right, should you need to glide. Now, the other nice component to uh, the glide range ring is this blue uh, cyan chevron that you see here pointing off to the left. Uh, now that's gonna point out your uh, best glide airport indicator. So in this case, it is uh, Tecumseh Muni there, zero golf three. Um, and so uh, again, in the, in the case that you have to immediately start gliding, you've got an indication there that's gonna point you in the right direction. Now, the uh, pilot can configure uh, some parameters like the minimum runway length. So even if there's more than one airport within glide range, we can help decide based on your input uh, which one is the best to point you to initially. Down here on the GTN 650XI, you can see we've got the nearest page up. And again, uh, all the airports that are within glide range will show up there on the nearest page. In this case, it's only one. You see the word glide with the green check mark there. So all three of those features work in conjunction with the GTN XI series uh, to really get your point in the right direction on the chance that you need to start gliding. Um, one other thing that I'll point out, the uh, GTN as a series has had these uh, custom data fields in the corners for a long time. Um, something new for the GTN XI is this radios button. Um, and what that does, that shortcut, uh, allows you to see the status of the radios on both COM1 and COM2. 
and control them. So in this case, we're, we're talking about COM1, the GTN 750XI up here. You can see that on COM2, we're currently set to 135.47. And if you want to, you can actually touch right here and manipulate the radio frequency for COM2. You can even hit transfer to move that into the active and it all happens right there. So this is the new GTNXI feature that allows you to control a second uh, GTNXI uh, in, a, in an instance where you have a dual installation. It's very helpful for tandem cockpit aircraft, for example, where there might be two separate cockpits, each one with the GTN, but they're interfaced together. This allows you to control both radios from one cockpit. So if I have an older GTN, how can I upgrade to the GTNXI? Upgrading the GTN XI is easy, especially if you have an original GTN, as a dealer can perform a slide-in upgrade. Pat, thank you for showing us some details about the new hardware. I'm looking forward to flying them someday soon. Thanks for watching this AIN video. Please like, subscribe, and share it if you've enjoyed it. Also, visit AINonline.com for all the latest on the aviation industry.